Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to find an infinite limit. To complete this problem, we'll confirm that our function has a vertical asymptote at the x value the limit approaches. Then we'll evaluate the function at values close to and on both sides of the vertical asymptote. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 half of the function x times secant of pi x. Before I do anything else, I want to see if I can get my function in terms of sine and or cosine. Whenever you're dealing with trigonometric identities, it's always easiest to deal with sine and cosine because those are the values you'll be most familiar with on the unit circle. And so if we can transform this equation, to be something in terms of sine and cosine, then it'll be much easier for us to evaluate the function at any value. So let's go ahead and change the function. We know that secant is the same as one over cosine. So we can say that our function here is the same as the limit as x approaches one half of x divided by cosine of pi x. So we just took the x here and we moved it to our numerator because it was already in the numerator and then we changed secant of pi x into 1 over cosine of pi x. Now, as with any limit problem, our next step is to see if we can use substitution to find the limit as x approaches 1 half. Substitution is where we take the number we're approaching, in this case 1 half, and just plug it into our function. So if we plug 1 half into the function, what we'll get is 1 half divided by when we plug 1 half in for x, we'll get pi times 1 half, which is just pi over 2. So we'll get cosine of pi over 2. Well, cosine of pi over 2, as you may know, either from your knowledge of the unit circle or plugging it into your calculator, you can see that cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. Well, we can't have 0 in the denominator of our fraction here, so we're not going to be able to just use the substitution method to solve for the limit. But what we have confirmed is that we have a vertical asymptote of this function at the value x equals 1 half. Because we're dividing here by 0, that means that our function is undefined at that point. So we've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 half. What that means is that we're going to have an infinite limit as x approaches 1 half. So either positive infinity or negative infinity and possibly one-sided limits. So the way that we're actually going to evaluate this is by plugging in numbers that are close to 1 half. So we'll take, for example, 0 0.49, 0 0.499, 0 0.4999, and one more value. These will be on the left-hand side of our vertical asymptote, which we know to be at 0.5. So what we'll do is we'll plug each of these values into our function, right? x divided by cosine of pi x. So we would take 0.49 divided by cosine of pi times 0.49. We can also plug them into our original function here, x times secant of pi x. Either one will give us the same answer. But when we do this, when we plug in 0.49, we'll get 15.6 back. When we plug in 0.499, we get approximately 159. When we plug in 0.4999, we'll get 1591. And when we plug in 0.49999, we'll get approximately 15915. What this tells us is that the value of our function is increasing exponentially. And because we already know that the limit will be an infinite limit because we identified a vertical asymptote at x equals one half, we know that the limit as x approaches one half from the left hand side will be positive infinity. We can see that the trend here of this is moving toward positive infinity as x gets closer and closer to 0.5 coming in from the left hand side. What we need to do now is check to make sure to see that the same thing is happening on the right hand side because the right hand side could be pro approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. So we'll try plugging in 0 0.51, 0 0.501, 0 0.5001, and 0 0.50001. And what we find when we plug in all four of those values, either to our original function here or the function that we change to be in terms of cosine, we'll get the same values except negative. We'll get approximately negative 16, approximately negative 159, negative 15, 
91 and negative 15, 9, 15. So what we can see here is that as we get closer and closer to 5 coming in from the right hand side, the value of our function approaches negative infinity. What this tells us is several things. Remember that when we're talking about infinite limits, that when we, we, when we find that the limit of our function is either positive infinity or negative infinity, technically we could say that the limit does not exist. But because identifying that the limit approaches positive infinity as x approaches 1 half is still valuable information for us about the function. So we, we usually write it this way. We say that the limit as x approaches 1 half from the negative side, so we write that negative, from the negative side or from the left hand side of our function x times secant of pi x is equal to positive infinity or dne does not exist. Either way really is acceptable and sometimes your professor will prefer that you say positive infinity or sometimes indicate that it does not, does not exist, but either way you could be correct depending on what your professor will accept. As x approach, The limit as x approaches one half from the positive or right hand side of our function x times secant of pi x is equal to negative infinity or again does not exist because technically the limit can't be infinity. The third piece of information that we gather from the two that we've already written is that because the left and right hand limits are different, there is no general limit. So we'll go ahead and say no general limit. Remember that the definition of a limit is that the right and left hand limits both exist and that they are equal to one another. If those things are true, the general limit exists. In this case, the left hand and right hand limits don't technically exist, but we call them positive and negative infinity. But in either case, whether you say they don't exist or you identify them as positive and negative infinity, they're not equal to one, to one another, which means that there will be no general limit, no single limit as x approaches one half. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.